my Lord, Thrandall is wise. But in this instance, his judgment is clouded. Aidan Turner first read for an elf. This is to do with your meeting with Gandalf. <laughs> Will you at least tell me what I'm seeking? He literally went on the board, but we didn't know <laughs> where he was, who he was going to play. But he felt so right for the world of, of Middle Earth. As Killy began to swim into focus, this sort of sense of recklessness, but joyful, but also staunch, we kept going back to Aiden. But I kept thinking, he's never going to want to play a dwarf. There's no way. Fran said, we should ask the question. And we did. And he said yes. And it was, yeah. What's the matter? Oh. You don't look very good. I thought someone was going to light a fire. Fire? Oh, no. Oh, no, I shouldn't think so. Not for this. Just a bit of rain. Yeah. I did the audition with Aiden, and the great thing with Aiden is that he and I, as soon as we met, we got along, which I knew was going to be important for the characters, um, but it was nice to know they didn't have to fake it, you know? And I think he probably felt the same way. Um, yeah. He had a couple of very anxious days later. Philippa called me up and said, you know, we'd like to offer you the role. And I was so shocked. Philly and Keeley have heard a lot of stories of heroic fighters and, and uh, you know, triumphant leaders and such, and I guess Thorin sort of fits in to that mould. So Thorin is someone that they aspire to be like and somebody they really want to impress. Philly and Keeley are the youngest and the fittest and his best fighters. <laughs> Thorin is passing on all of his skill and all of his knowledge to them. Killy is the cheeky, the more audacious kind of guy. He's, he's kind of up for anything. He's just excited to be there, really. <laughs> Thorin has a slightly more relaxed approach to Killy. He's got a bit of a soft spot for him. He'll let him be his own man, and there isn't quite the pressure on the second prince. I'm looking at some uh, elven girls. Of that, yeah, yeah, the okay. map box too. We think maybe Killy has a little bit of elvish blood in him somewhere. Maybe his mother was messing around with an elf. There's something up because he looks a bit like an elf and he's attracted to them, to everyone else's amazement. That one there's not bad. That's not an elf, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Aiden and Dean tried to always make smart comments about everyone else, so they're the young troubles of the group. Hey, stirrups. We should be holding hands. <laughs> Aidan Turner, fantastic guy, really good chap. He, you can definitely know why he is the, the hunk dwarf. With his bellowing hair and very, very short beard. The hair, that's the hair. Aidan Turner, I mean, he's just a dish, isn't he? And why does the camera lens like him? I hate him, he's so beautiful. It makes me feel like I'm a fat chin. That's my one weakness. Oh, I mean, uh, no, it's not. I'm perfectly comfortable with my chin. <laughs> the knives bend the forks, smash the bottles and burn the cup. When you finish the table, with the other. feet ones. That's my double bag of tails. I think you can do what you want, boys, because I've obviously killed him. So he's dead already. So no, he he's not. He's, he's dead. dead. He's, he's dead. dead. I got him right between the eyes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Dino has a spade. If anybody needs a spade, I've got yeah. it. He's I'm got a spade. spade. They set up the scene in, in Bag End um, with, with the food, and it looks amazing. And just told, OK, listen, just wreck it. <laughs> I was aiming for Ken stuff. <laughs> Because he couldn't take it. The, the dude can't handle an orange to the head. Hit him with it. Leg a lamb when he's not looking. I mean, vicious stuff. Nothing playful about this at all. I mean, I never told him this. He's Surely he's going to hear about it now, but I was hitting him hard. I think I nearly took his nose off. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> I shot it off. Go! Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> this is the patented oin cooling system. With your hands shoved down these tubes, you will never, ever become overheated, either in the delivery of your performance or the rubbish you speak to the camera. We were the most useless race. We cannot do anything. When the camera's off, I mean, the state of us, I mean, we're all just half 
baked and dead by the side of the set and with little, you know, fans in everyone's faces and, you know, makeup artists coming over. I'll get my more sweat, my back, my back. Just people cooling stuff on and Peter raring to get going again with another take. It's hilarious. Can you feel, you feel that already? That? It feels like I am pissing myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I think in the second day we all kind of, we're all complaining about something, about how hot it was and we thought, you know, we just need a big place for us to hang out. A big tent would just stick in loads of air conditioning, put it in loads of it and pump it in and we can all wait in there. It was done the next day. Here we are in the quarantine tent. <clears throat> What are the stunties doing? And we're like, oh, we can do that, we can do what the stunties did. So Andy, for the last take, went, OK, yeah, knock it up. And they turned it up really high. I mean, it literally almost threw us out of the trees. <laughs> yeah, and they can dial it up to how strong they want it. So, you know, they turn up a little bit and the tree shakes a little bit, they turn up a lot and it shakes all the way across. The tree. And then I sort of fell back, and as I fell back, the tree came forward and like smashed me on the chest. And I made this involuntary squeak. It kind of came out just like this. <laughs> it's tennis balls and sticks. Do you know what I mean? It, you're told this is a troll. This is what he looks like. You see a little figure the wetter bring over. You know, you see, oh, well, OK, brilliant. OK, that doesn't really help me at all. Because you're looking at these tennis balls going, holy mother of God. It's going to be a wee bit hard to look at that there and not that. <laughs> <laughs> Then you look at this playback, yeah? And it shows the troll moving. I mean, and with you in mind. It completely makes sense then. You kind of go, all oh, right. You know, relatively speaking, the size, they're always way bigger than you think they are, even on the set. <laughs> troll show was the sort of defining moment as an actor for me to go, wow, this, it is this big. Great to just see a big set. I think we're on the K stage, you know, which is one of the bigger sets in Stone Street. And I just remember it being huge. I remember thinking, oh, finally made it. <laughs> I'm finally in a big movie. The dwarves will be sometimes our real actors, but of course they were far too big for horses. We're also going to be using our scale doubles, who will bravely stand their ground as horses thunder towards them. We hope. Scales are, are vitally important, and uh, and yeah, I mean you build up a relationship with, with your scale because I mean he's watching you in the screens all the time. You're doing your stuff, and he's in costume and wearing a face mask, wearing a mask that is a mold of your own face, with similar facial hair, colouring, everything but with a stern look. So he's walking around with this kind of look at him, this evil look the entire time. And then you go, all right, Robert, he goes, hey, how's it going? What? <laughs> and this kind of voice comes out, you know, and you kind of go, shit, this is weird. I wish you'd take off his mask right now. <laughs> so it's quite, it's quite disconcerting. It's quite weird to have them walking around. I mean, it's uncanny how close some of them look, some of them more than others. Are there any women here? <laughs> it is muscle memory and it is, you're doing it so often that you don't have to think about it and that's kind of the way it works. Doing a lot of archery stuff, yeah, yeah. Killy is he's quite a skillful bowman. Good girl, good girl. Big design challenge for us was giving the sternness, the weight, and the thickness in the forehead without causing it to overshadow the eyes. We'd lost these amazing characters that had been hired to play the dwarf. Achilles started off with quite a lot of prosthetics and, and there was a lot of latex going on and um, different dimensions, a much bigger nose and a bigger forehead and different sort of shaping on the eyebrows. What became uh, apparent, I guess, to Fran and Phil is that Aidan's face had to all but 100% speak through the makeup for his handsome demeanour and twinkle 
that is in Aidan's eye and in the way he presents this character, we had little ability to encumber that with prosthetics. And ultimately, Aidan is wearing a cowl, slightly increases his head size with the extension ears out on them, and just a tiny little prosthetic on the tip of his nose. <laughs> Have you seen this? <laughs> Aidan Turner, Adam Brown. Aidan Turner, Adam Brown. Well, that's good. Here we go. All right, and action. I had a few months off before the shoot and I went, I bet I can grow a wicked beard. And I could. And uh, <laughs> but I got over here and Peter looked at me and went, mm, no, I'm going to shave that. We want you with some stuff. Yeah. Well, it's almost a sight for sore eyes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is the best place to have you to If I could get my hands to you. My wife's a redhead. No hair, just a redhead. Bofa? Alcoholic. St. Patrick's Day, uh huh, was yesterday. First day in 29 years, Bofor hasn't had a drink. It's only two o'clock. <laughs> Typical Irish. <laughs> Typical Irish. <laughs> My character is a thief. He's one eye on you and one eye on what he wants to rob, which I kind of respect in a weird way. I mean, he'd rob from his own mother. I'm actually in to see how much stuff I can neck off set. Dari, he's Mother Goose, isn't he? He will be the shop steward of the group. He's the safety officer, if you like. <laughs> Dory is quite um, a loner, and that was uh, through many of the cast helping me to come to that decision. He'd been extremely mean to me. He's even got a dwarf BMW with his name on the number plate. Oh, don't tell me there's a license plate. Really? I've heard a rumour that his license plate is Dory. I think that's a vicious rumour. I think it can't be real. He can't be. It can't be real. When did this happen? This is the uncoolest thing that could possibly happen to that man. He's a beauty. See his coat. See the grey bit. Hmm? Yeah, it is a beauty. But then the Nazis had very nice costumes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at his little face. Yeah. But he else has prosthetic hands, um, and I have to pull on these really enormous gloves, I guess, that go to just above the elbow. Make him look a lot cooler, and he does have, you know, pretty decent forearms with them. You see, I don't really need them, because, you know, girls tell me the forearms are one of my strengths. I do have... We're talking about a diameter of at least seven or eight inches there, which is a lot more than uh, anyone else would have. I mean, a lot more than Mark Hadlow, for instance, would have. I mean, he wouldn't have, di he wouldn't have forearms like this. Are you kidding me? Not ready for what? Reading. God, <laughs> 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 Funny thing is that, like, everybody gets our names wrong. Feely. Oh, no shit. Sorry. Keely. Yeah. It's rock and roll. That's, that's what we're about. Rock and roll dwarves. Can't you see? I don't have the umbrellas in the movie, by the way, just in case you're wondering. No, this is the colours clash. Action. Feely. And Keely. At, At your, your service. service. 